Hello everybody. So today we're gonna tackle like a combustion problem. And the problem says one kilomole of ethane, which is C2H6, is burned with an unknown amount of air during the combustion process. If the combustion is complete and there are three K moles of free oxygen in the free O2 in the products, the air fuel mass ratio is what? Now we're gonna need a few equations. Um, first of all, I want to point out that the number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass, okay? And this is sort of bringing chemistry into everything that we've been tackling here. Um, mass, uh, the air-fuel ratio is given by this. The mass of the air over the mass of the fuel. Cool. Now, um, there's a way you have to tackle these problems. It says one k-mole of ethane, C2H6. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in that C2. We're gonna set up a chemical equation here and we're gonna balance it, okay? So C2H6, and that's a one in front of it, but I'm not gonna write that one in simply because we know it's one mole, one K mole, okay? Um, it's burned with an unknown amount of air. We're gonna have, this is the stoichiometric uh, constant, I believe it's called. Um, you have O2 plus 3.76 N2. And this right here is just what we write. This is the sort of the makeup of, um, of air. We're sort of ignoring all the carbon dioxide and the, the dirt, I guess, and everything that's involved in this. But when you do, because I think air is like, I want to say like 69 or 71 percent, nitrogen or 79 percent, I don't remember the, the exact value, but this is what you end up getting. So it's, it's one part O2, 3.76 parts N2, and that whole thing makes up your air molecule. And then this is the unknown amount of air, right? So this combusts to give us, normally we would have, I just start from here and I'm like, add oxygen to this. This oxygen would be CO2, right? CO2, then I add oxygen to this, so H2O. Then what they, normally it would be N2, but um, the N2, because they told us that there are three mole, three K mole of free O2 in the products, we have to add that in. So I know that this is gonna be three O2, and then, huh, let me give myself a little bit more space, okay? I probably should have started more to the left, but that's fine. So I have CO2 plus H2O plus three O2. And then what you do with the nitrogen, you're always gonna have that 3.76 ATH N2, okay? So this is what we end up getting. I'm gonna put an X here and a Y here to, um, to um, I'm gonna put an X there and a Y there. And, well, there's another way you can, okay, we'll, we'll do it like this. I'll, uh, I think there's another way you can do it that I just thought of, but that's fine. So this X and this Y is just basically saying, I don't know how many K moles that are gonna be produced of carbon dioxide and water. Now I have to find that. I know that we have 3.02, um, 3.02, um, I mean, sorry, 3, O2, 3 K moles of O2 produced, and then this ATH is gonna help us determine our total amount of nitrogen produced. So I'm gonna balance this whole equation, and this can be done by looking at the C individually, looking at the H individually, and looking at the O individually, and looking at the N. Well, the N sort of produces like an inconsistency, so don't even worry about that. But that's fine. Um, what we end up getting is, um, so we do this, I look at the number of C, of what I have with all of my C's in the equation. So on this side of the equation, I only see carbon right here, and there are two molecules of carbon, right? There's nothing else here to do with carbon, so I can write equals, I have one, I have an X in front of this carbon here. There's no carbon in the rest of the equation, so I know that X equals two, okay? I'm looking at H, six, no more H on this side. So this equals, this is two times Y, and there's no more H. So solve for Y, Y equals three, right? O. So I have two, what some people do, they write like O2 here, then they just write the ATH, but I like to do it individual O. So I have two times ATH is equal to, 
2x plus y plus 6. I have my, so like, let me go ahead and solve. So 2x plus y, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 6 is 13. So ATH, my ATH is going to be equal to 6.5. Because 13 is equal to 2 times ATH. So my ATH is 6.5. And just to show you what happens when we look at the nitrogen, I have 3.76 times 2. That gives me... Um, 7, 6 times 2. That gives me 7.52, right? Times ATH equals 3.76 times 2, which is 7.52 ATH. So this is not really an inconsistency. That's 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 a misstatement, but. It just tells me the exact same thing, basically. Um, what I was saying that you could have done, normally, I don't even think, the way I do it sometimes, I don't put even, like, I would have put, like, a, so I have X, Y, I would have put, like, a Z here, or maybe if, if I didn't know the amount of oxygen produced, I would have put a Z here, and a W there, just another variable, and I would have gotten that my variable would have been 3.76 after I solved it, and it would have given me this exact, it would have given me that same thing. So when I've gotten solved for all of my uh, unknowns, right, I can get that my new equation is C2H6 plus, I put in my ATH, 6.5 times O2 plus 3.76N2. Once we uh, react that, we get 2 C O two plus three H two O plus three O two plus three point seven six times six point five is twenty four point four four and two. And I know that looks really funny, but sometimes you just have to trust your math. Like, I'm just double-checking myself as I'm going along. Because, um, like, at times, it can be sort of tricky. So, I've gotten this, right? Now, they're asking, uh, they asked us what the air-fuel mass ratio is. Um, what they're basically ask asking is, like, the mass of air reacted with the mass of, or as a ratio with the mass of fuel. I know that there's only one mole. Okay, so first of all, how do we get our mass? Mass can be given by, using this equation, Mass is equal to number of moles times molar mass, right? So I'm gonna literally just do that. So my air fuel ratio, let me use this color. Let me use blue. So my air fuel ratio is simply gonna be the mass of air over my mass of fuel, which is given by number of moles of air times molar mass of air over number of moles of fuel times molar mass of fuel. Wow, I totally misspelled fuel. Equals, so how many moles of air do I have? 6.5, but we have to be careful. This whole thing we have to take into account for the number of moles. So this is one mole of O2 plus 3.76 moles of O6. So yes, I have 6.5 moles of, the, of those, of like at, at the front here, but I have to multiply that times 4.76 because I'm adding these moles in as well, right? Then the molar mass of air, um, I'm gonna go ahead and look that up afterward. I'll just do these for now. So the number of moles of fuel, we know it's 1K mole, like they said, right? Um, the molar mass of fuel, I'm gonna look that up. So I have to look up the molar mass of, of ethane, and the molar mass is ethane, right? Yes, and the molar mass of Air and actually that's what I have here. So the molar mass of ethane is 30.07. And you can go ahead and do these like like if they gave you like the molar mass of 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 um carbon, right? 
you just multiply that times two and add that to the six times the molar mass of hydrogen, right? Cool. Um, and same thing when we're trying to find the molar mass of air. So let me look up the molar mass of air. I think I had it here. 28.97. And I just want to point out these are, this is like the units for these would be in kilograms per K mole. And I mean, it, when you do the ratio and everything, it's going to be the same thing as grams per mole. But this is the unit we're using. I just wanted to emphasize that. Okay. So, um, once I do my whole, um, molar mass and everything, or once I do the whole calculation, right, my air fuel ratio comes out to be, Twenty nine point eight zero. So AF is equal to twenty nine point eight zero. And I guess the units of AF would be kg of air. Even though it's like it's really a ratio, so it doesn't really have units. But if you really, really want to be specific, it's kg of air per kg of C C two H six. I guess kg of fuel if you want to write it like that. And that's what you end up getting, okay? Now, I want to pose a question. Like, if they asked us for the fuel-air ratio, it's really just the same thing, the mass of the fuel over the mass of the air, and that would just be, like, one over that, right? So they're just reciprocals. Um, so this is just basically saying for every 29.8 parts of air that is being burnt, or, or kilograms of air that is being burnt, one kilogram of uh, of um, ethane is being burnt. And I mean, that sort of just shows us, I guess, that there's a whole lot of air in comparison to the ethane. Um, and I guess, I mean, it just helps us check if things are burning completely, I guess. Um, yeah, so I mean, so that's really that. Um, like I said, if anything is, any, is ever unclear, don't forget to uh, like ask in the comments and everything. Please like and subscribe. Always be sure to read the description as well. And let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.